Uh, welcome to the seminar today. It is uh, the last one in the first series of the Kebab project. Kebab is the Knowledge Alliance for Evidence-Based Urban Practices and it is funded by the Erasmus Plus project. Uh, the uh, project is coordinated by the University of Cyprus, the Department of Architecture, and this webinar is also part of one of our courses. The research methodologies course uh, so our students are attending uh, the seminar as part of uh, their normal classes which is something that we try to do uh, with the uh, kebab project is to integrate the project's activities uh, with existing uh, ongoing courses uh, in the participant institutions uh, today uh, we have uh, two speakers uh, Nicola Scardigno and Giuseppe Strappa, uh, who are part of ISUF Italy, that is the international seminar uh, on urban form. Uh, the Italian network is, is an international uh, organization, an international network, and it has uh, various uh, regional branches uh, in various parts of the world. They are going to uh, present uh, reading the built environment at the different scales. Uh, about the um, morphological uh, processual method uh, of urban form analysis. And we're going to start uh, with Nicola. Uh, Nicola is an architect and is also a lecturer at the Polytechnic in Bari. Uh, so I'll stop sharing my screen now. Uh, Nicola, if you want to uh, share yours. Sure. Mm -hmm. So can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay. So shall I start? Okay, cool. Please do. Thank you, Ilaria. So uh, good morning to everyone. Um, my presentation will concern the urban fabric and uh, the building type. It is part of a general presentation uh, named the really the built environment at different scale. Actually, uh, my presentation should become after uh, the Giuseppe Strappa presentation. Uh, um, so let me uh, just um, introduce briefly the, the structure of this uh, presentation. We have the first part when I'm going to talk about the urban fabric. Uh, well, we are going to give a notion of the urban fabric then recognize a classification and then to um, the components of the urban public. Then the second part, I'm gonna talk about the building type. Even in this case, I'm gonna give uh, the notion of uh, the building type. Then we're gonna talk about very briefly, curtain house and the real house, and then the relation between the fabric and uh, the building type. So, um, Starting from the notion of urban fabric, I gonna, sorry, let me just take off this, sorry, okay, cool. I gonna uh, um, introduce the, 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 the notion of urban fabric by um, reporting uh, an affirmation of the Strap uh, in that terms. Uh, in the reading of the built reality, he said, the notion of fabrics is one of the most complex. It expresses the solidarity between roots and houses that are aggregates in order to form a neither degree organism. The type as a concept is the basis of a large part of the formation process of urban fabric. So the association of individual housing units in order to form units with either scale develops according to their home laws, which vary in space and time so much so we can speak of fabrics as a type of aggregation. Basically, uh, we, we talk mostly of fabrics made by housing, consisting of types congruent with the notion of aggregation. 
in that um, regard, on the left hand side of that slide, we can see um, the um, recalcitrant hypothesis of the external um, aggregation of Lombard wall of uh, Trani City, a work uh, made by uh, Professor Giuseppe Strappa and Professor Matteo around 2000 at the Polytechnic of Bari, where we can see from the first uh, phase is uh, the aggregation of, of single units along the already existing routes. Then the second phase, the uh, expansion of uh, triangular areas at the top of which specialized buildings are implanted. And while the third phase that sees the consolidation of the urban organism uh, with the ecospecus uh, specialization of the built that will lead to the transformation of basic building into palaces. So basically, uh, we can uh, uh, define the herbal fabric as a complex system of formative laws and uh, progressive transformation that characterize an aggregation consisting of building organisms related to each other with respect to a root. It is exactly in that sense that we can talk of a building organism that are composed in order to form organism with another scale. Let's see this uh, scheme where we can see the aggregate in the middle part with the, uh, the aggregative organism, which represent a kind of a mediator entity, a mediator uh, uh, built entity with respect to the building type and the urban settlement. So we can see that uh, the aggregate uh, represent the with respect to the building type the containing system while the building type with respect to the aggregate is the containing system at the same time uh, the aggregate represents with respect to the urban settlement so the urban organism a containing system while the urban settlements so of the urban organism represent with respect to aggregate the containing organism uh, so we can easily say that the aggregative organism represent a kind of uh, a fundamental passage of scale that provide the measure of how the city itself is the result of historically identified the process of success increases. Um, uh, again, our idea of aggregate is that a morphological entity structured over time in a processual way to the point uh, of deriving from this process a system of formative and progressive mutation laws. These formative laws can be traced back to logical categories that summarize the concept of urban fabric and guide its design reading. Let's move now to a potential classification of the aggregative system. Basically, we can uh, have basic fabric, which are the fabric made up of building with uh, a mainly residential function. An example is the San Frediano district in Florence. While on the other side, we have a special fabrics uh, which are made up of uh, special buildings uh, not intended with a residential fabric, um, sorry, function. An, an, an example of that case uh, is the Strada Nuova in Genoa, the so called Garibaldi. By extension of the fabric concept, the system of apartment of uh, in line house can also be considered. Are an urban fabric where the root, in this case vertical, is defined by stairs and elevator. Similarly, the skyscraper consisting of a composite aggregation of a house, office, and services is a vertical fabric. So, in that slide, we can see an example of a line house, the Unité d'Habitation de Le Corbusier, where the vertical root is defined by stairs and elevator. On the other side, an example of uh, vertical uh, fabric represented by the skyscraper, 
the, the tower built by Hans Koloff in Potsdam Plaza in Berlin, where uh, is, it is clear, uh, like the experimental example of a complex of aggregation that prefigures a form of self-sufficient urban fabric and instead has urban microorganisms. Um, okay. So um, let's move now to uh, identify those components that uh, constitute an urban fabric. These are uh, identifiable in the built part, the lot which is made, which is uh, constitutes of the built plus the pertinent interior, so the empty area, and the root which allow the hashes. Uh, we have uh, so a different element that constitutes uh, a, a fabric. These are the built lot, which correspond to the built part of uh, and the pertinent interior. So this is the built part of a lot, and this is the pertinent area, so the hemp area just uh, on the back of the built part, both uh, associated to the root that connects them and that's a mighty so-called pertinent strip of the root. What is the pertinent strip? Is the band related to each front of a root formed by the envelope of the built lot and served by heat. The pertinent strip of the root tends to correspond to a unitary depth dimension for each face. So root and the pertinent area, which are the area that here you can see uh, underlined with the red, green, and the yellow, are useful for identifying the structure of the fabric. Another uh, aspect, very important aspect of the fabric is the modularity of the fabric. That is the a kind of a prerequisite for an organic relation between the bell type and the root, which are two components uh, uh, which are interdependent to uh, each other. On each root, we note a basic character of the fabric that are representing the fronts of the built arranged modularly. So these are the modulation, the modularity of the lots, which is a symptom in the reality of a global modularity of the aggregate conformation made in more or less brief time and by adopting a similar burning time. So this is very important. And then we have the root, actually, which is configured as the structure through which to reach a place, starting from another place, and the relation between the buildings. The study of a root allowed to uh, the reconstruction of the layout of the root itself and the reason which are at the base of the urban fabric. Uh, we have also two conceptual components uh, internal uh, of uh, built reality, where for built reality we mean a different scale of that. So the territory, the urban settlement, the aggregate, and the, the, built, the built typology. One of these is the concept of node. Sorry, I will try to move off again take off this bar, let's see, uh, okay. Where the node defines the discontinuity uh, within a continuum. So if we image it is a path, this is continuity within a continuous or the intersection between two continuous. So if these are two roots, this is the intersection node between these two uh, uh, contains element. This notion is basic to recognize uh, in general terms the character of the aggregation of elements of the space of a building, of a building aggregate. The note also is often constitute the focal element of the structure. It could be an architecture, uh, an urban settlement or a territorial uh, reality. Therefore, starting from the notion of a node, the concept of nodality expressed the connection between 
components of a building of uh, or an urban organism identified as a point of access. Uh, consequently, the concept of the anti node uh, expressed the peripheral condition as less position with respect to the node. For example, if it is a node, this is an uh, anti node condition, uh, which is peripheral with respect to the node one. Then we have the concept of pole, which is the, say, it's Rapa, the sublimation of the term uh, node. Uh, as it is not uh, an intersection, but rather an expression of a condition of beginning or termination. So if it is a root, this is the beginning of that root, this is the termination of that root. The polarity is therefore the character associated to the pole or the character of an organism that has the property of uh, attracting and orienting. And therefore, the polarization is the act of attracting or orienting towards a direction. The root, just repeating what I said before, is the concretization of the connection of a point A to point B, for example. Uh, so we, we, we talk about the root. Uh, they play a structural role uh, within an urban fabric, and we can basically recognize four main types of roots that correspond to as many phases of formation and transformation of the urban aggregate. We have the matrix root. You can see from that scheme, they have one, which is which could be spontaneous or planned, which connects urban or territorial poles, and which precede the construction. The construction of the matrix root correspond, we can say, to the first phase of the construction. Then we have the planet building roots, which are roots uh, bedded from the matrix root, and therefore chronological, successive, and uh, in terms of hierarchy, subordinated to the matrix root. Generally, the second phase of construction takes place by orienting roots orthogonally to, uh, with respect to the matrix root and are distant to each other the dimension of two new lots. Then we have the connecting roots, which are uh, planning building roots, uh, and the connection in that case occurs basically in two ways. For intentional construction of the landing of the planning building roots in order to complete the block. So these are the connecting roots that complete the block by connecting the two uh, planet building roots and or for um, demolition of the corresponding house that take place on the two planet building roots. In this case, the lot appears to be synchronous and parallel on the both sides of the connector root. The formation of these kind of roots basically completes the perimeter of uh, uh, the block, which is a component that tends to, may, we may say, to discretize the aggregation process. Then on the hand, we have the breakthrough root which intervenes at the end of the building process in the circular matter fabric in which they form new poles that create new connection needs. This is an example of the breakthrough route. Um, the, the, the breakthrough route basically determine irregular lots, as we can see from that scheme, uh, special buildings do the uh, obtaining of area of considerable economic value following the demolition of a consolidated building aggregate, a route with a wide road section. To uh, summarize what uh, I just said, we have a scheme here where we can see the matrix root indicated with the red, which corresponds to a first order root and the first phase of the construction. Then we have the planet building root, a second order root, the blue one, 
that are subordinated, as I said, to the matrix root, and which are basically orthogonal to uh, the matrix root. And then we have the connection root, the third order roots that are connecting the planar being the root and define the urban block. On the right hand side of that slide, we can see an example of a block shaped through a progressive construction from a matrix planet building and the connection route. And the, a very important aspect of this process of formation of the block is the circled um, infill fabric due to the use of the marginal pertinence area of uh, the block which produce basically an increasing of the built parts according to the different value of the intersection between the uh, roots. And that produce, of course, synchronic variants of the base sky type, sorry, call it the infield variants. Um, this is another uh, slide that shows this process of uh, uh, infill fabric that occurs basically on the marginal uh, uh, pertinential area of the block and the, which depends from the value, so from uh, the hierarchies that the intersection between roots has. For example, this is a scheme produced by Gianfranco Canigia, where it shows the full dot representative of a polarity, while, for example, an empty block, an anti-polarity or anti-node, where so the the the, um, the the infilled fabrics as uh, 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 less consumption. So on the um, bottom of the slide, we can see different example of the consumption of the pertinent area understood as variants of the uh, infilling fabric. Uh, that slide shows uh, um, a fabric of a neighbor of the medieval origin to the north of the sign uh, in uh, uh, Paris. So we can notice uh, the different roles, play, uh, different urban uh, fabric role played by architectural complex. For example, the polar uh, role played by the Les Halles and the Church Saint Eustache, while the role of an anti pole played by the two convents and the Hospital de la Trinité. And the, uh, the role of the matrix route played by the Rue Saint Denis and the Rue uh, Saint Martin. While another, another important role is played by that route that connect to polarities, the Montmartre Cemetery to uh, northwest part of the fabric to the cemetery of uh, Hinesheim to the southeast. On the right hand side of the slide, we can see instead uh, how can be uh, uh, translated the concepts of uh, breakthrough root according to the planning of Osman in Paris. Uh, the one that you can see uh, indicated are the breakthrough roots that connect the new polarity within the urban fabric of uh, Paris. Uh, this has a producer, uh, for example, as I said before, a triangular shape uh, of blocks, as you can see on the bottom of the slide. Uh, here, another um, uh, example, uh, Roma de Tridente di Piazza del Popolo, where we can see uh, on that image a progressive urban fabric formation where the arrows show the uh, triggering half of Via Ripetta, Via del Corso, and uh, Via del Babuino, um, while uh, on the, underneath, a scheme of a progressive nodality with a continuous line while a linear anti-nodality with a dotted line which determines basically uh, polarities marked with uh, an asterisk. On the right hand side uh, from a map designed by uh, Paolo Vaccaro the um, uh, basic and the special components of this part, uh, this uh, urban fabric, uh, with uh, the recognition of a modularity of the uh, basic uh, 
uh, fabric through the indication of the lot series. Um, in that slide, uh, I would like to talk very uh, quickly of uh, uh, work uh, done by uh, Giuseppe Strappan and his team at University La Sapienza. It concerns a reading of uh, the um, periferia east of Rome, uh, particularly uh, the um, uh, sector of Centocelle e Pietralata. I would like to explain the method they use to produce uh, the, um, um, the formative phases uh, of this uh, fabric. They start with analysis of uh, IgM maps, uh, an analysis of the fabric, which have been developed with the belief that the growth of the city is producing in parts in a diachronic and asynchronic manner with other urban um, partitions. Then, uh, in particular, the reading of the fabric of this portion of the city was conducted by recognizing block by block those were the um, relative hierarchies of the lots and uh, consequently the distribution of building phases in the lots itself. Uh, therefore, it was uh, um, necessary to take into account the size of the parcel, the hierarchies of the building elevation, and the uh, homogeneous or not uh, homogeneous relation with the, uh, the roots. Each block also, as we can see from this map, differently current, uh, show at the uh, particular organization of the uh, pertinent street relative to the roots classified according to uh, different hierarchies. Then all these uh, kind of, of analysis has allowed to uh, produce the phases of transformation of the area between the Pietralata and the uh, Centocelle districts, where the uh, main structural axis that determine the structure of the analyzed territory are shown in black, as we can see here, while the secondary axis I show in a gray. Uh, let's move now to the um, to define what we uh, mean for a building type. Because we said that the fabric is a morphological entity based on the relation of a congruence between the building type and the forms of aggregation, uh, becomes very fundamental for us to um, reflect on the concept of building types which is at the base of the fabric. Uh, we do it by starting from Saverio Muratore definition. He said uh, about the time, it is an a priori synthesis. A synthesis because the type is not a scheme, but a built organism in the totality of its components because it jointly summarized the experience previously operated and am aimed at prefiguring a future building, a priori because um, it's already existing in the mind of those who built according to a mental project, not designed but well clear even before the physical existence of a future building. So to summarize, we have the type uh, conceived as a synthesis. It is a mental operation that critically summarizes a quantity of a cognitive data, uh, locally and historically defined in a unitary and essential conclusion. So from one side, we have a matrix, which represents a concept, the principle, we can say, unconscious carried of an inherited culture in the making. From the other side, the transformation, so the formation of the architectural object inherent to the in the mating matrix principle. Both define the build construct, the building constructors, which identify basically historically and locally the type and make its own contribution to the updating of the type itself. 
uh, within these scenarios, the typology is the expression of a search for a continuity of a critical continuity of form produced by the designer as opposite to the pure subjectivism. So, um, that's the way we arrived to this data of cognitive synthesis of the project through the reading of the transformation that the built reality has undergone through our history in a different place. And that's why the reading of a typological, type of morphological process is based essentially on two fundamental aspects, the time and the space. Um, the Korean house and the Roe house have uh, um, significantly contributed the formation of many fabrics in the Mediterranean city. Uh, the Korean house, uh, uh, the elementary Korean house, is made up of a simple, a simple a rectangular perimeter wall, on one side of which the build is supported, always starting from the elementary cell. While the row house uh, is represented in the form of basic building typological process uh, from the elementary uh, room to the mature row house to the multifamiliar house to the inline house obtained from the row house recast. Look more in detail, even very briefly, the courtyard house example is one, one of the criteria that most influenced the development of the city based on this type is the common orientation of the build inside the enclosure, which can take place only on one side, the one which is exposed in the best condition. From that aspect derives a difference from form of occupation of the available internal area, which is based essentially to the orientation of the route and to the type of the building. Uh, basically, the reference to the aggregation according to an open service, which is characterized by uh, the presence of a root on the front and the root on the back, where each root allows access to a single series of courts. Or in a closed series, characterized by the um, aggregation of the courts and elements in two rows, and those roots distribute the units on, units on both sides of the block. Well, the process of transformation and consumption of cordial house fabric take place through three phenomena, essentially. The increasing of the bill, which consisting in obtaining the progressive feeling of the free area um, available inside the enclosure up to the uh, definition uh, of a kind of a hatrium, a central hatrium. The tabernization, which is the occupation of the front of the route and the consequent uh, uh, specialization of for commercial activity of the relative rooms uh, up to arrive to the phenomenon of the insulation obtained when the uh, multifamiliarization of the building within the enclosure is completed uh, the pseudo row house is the that concludes the transformation process on the Cordiate House and they give rise to a new building type. Very quickly, these are examples of uh, a so-called pseudo row house uh, based on uh, a mono, uh, a single room with only one uh, entrance from outside. Uh, then uh, it sees uh, um, an evolution with uh, a vertical doubling and with uh, a gaining uh, a stair along the path, an external stair along the path, or an internal stair, which basically differentiate the two uh, level. Uh, up to arrive at further vertical uh, development of the uh, single cell, the single room. Here, example of uh, 
uh, a curtain house um, fabric um, differently conceived uh, according to the greater or less planning of the building aggregate, the orography of the land, and the polarizing presence of uh, uh, special construction. Uh, particularly the case of Olintos, where we have uh, Curtain house built in a closed series and separated uh, by uh, to each other on a closed side by the hambitus, which is a free gap for the supply and uh, disposal of water. Um, the regularity of the planet fabric only admits variance in the nodal points in that case. While the case of Priene, the aggregation of Cordian house, because it is a variant with respect to the fabric identified by the Olynthos plan due to the irregular orography, uh, after arrive to Delos, uh, which is an example of aggregation of insulae of uh, Cordian house in an unplanned uh, fabric, uh, a fabric which is determined by roots that precede actually the construction uh, generated by the presence of special buildings that uh, uh, polarize the roots uh, itself. Here, an example uh, of uh, um, courtyard uh, um, fabric. Uh, Cordial House fabric of uh, Ponticelli in Naples, uh, a reconstruction of the single family perimeter of the Cordial House. The uh, process then goes on with the reconstruction of the beginning of the multifamiliarization by a tabernization and the insulation of the, uh, the, the courtyard, of the, the space internal to the courtyard, up to arrive to the phenomenon of its insulation, a complete insulation of the courtyard itself. But the, the type of the pseudo row house, uh, it can be found also, also as foundational and not deriving from the process of compassion of a courtier. Very clear example are the case of uh, Bichelli and Moffetta, cases on which uh, Professor Maria Lieva has uh, worked uh, with Professor Strappa within the Polytechnic of Bari. Here, an example of a plan in medieval aggregation of the pseudo row house type, or in the Morfetta as, uh, as well, with aggregation of pseudo row house type, we can see the row house uh, uh, aggregate in series with the um, single facing and a common wall uh, uh, in uh, uh, between. Then we get the 15th, 16th century for a uh, get the type of a mature row house uh, uh, characterized by a multi cell and a single family. Basically, we can recognize two kinds of row house the one with a shop, and so the stair perpendicular to the root, and the one with the atrium with the stair parallel to uh, uh, the root. Here, example of uh, the already mentioned cases with the uh, star perpendicular to the root, um, and here the hands rest to the shop, while the star parallel to the root and the configuration as a hatrium of the uh, hand trans. Then the process of uh, multifamily house the process of uh, plurifamiliarization, the plurifamiliarization of the type, which sees the increasing, the vertical increasing of uh, uh, the build with the doubling of uh, uh, stairs, or the increasing in depth of the, the type uh, with the having of uh, a small patio, a chiostrina, for uh, provide uh, a ventilation light for the internal uh, cell. Have to arrive to the inlinery cast uh, 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 phenomenon, which is the uh, assembling of the row house uh, to define inline, the type of the inline houses. Here yeah, a few examples of form of aggregated determined by planted row houses in Italy, the cases of uh, 
these cases where we can see uh, the identification of uh, the row house type with the stir power to the root and uh, uh, the identification of the type itself through this exercise of reconstruction hypothesis. These are some pictures that show the single units and the aggregation, the serial aggregation of units. Or the case of uh, this Venetian case, uh, very interesting, where the aggregation of row houses uh, occurs according to a divergent mirror coupling of the single units in the presence of the common wall of which the stairs are leaning. And this is, this is a picture that shows this uh, uh, second type, second kind of uh, aggregation. Uh, this is the last uh, part of this presentation where I'm going to uh, present uh, an exercise, a redesigning exercise uh, uh, promoted, we can say, from uh, by Gianfranco Canigia and uh, uh, adopted uh, by um, Giuseppe Strapp and uh, Matteo Lieva, which consists uh, in, uh, in to um, uh, gain formative process of public and uh, building a typology. So this is an example of the redesigning of the um, the neighborhood of Santa Croce in Florence, which was demolished in 1935-39. Uh, this is the third phase where we can see uh, the building on the matrix route via uh, Pietrapiana, via Ghibellina, and the via Verdi. And the, the redesigning consists of uh, uh, the redesigning of the mercantile courtyard on the Pietrapiana, Ghibellina, and uh, Verdi, and with the fabrics of court rows in continuity to uh, Via Pietrapiana itself. The second phase is the tracing of the planning building routes, which derive from uh, um, Via uh, Ghibellina and uh, via Verdi. Then the third phase, which sees the consolidation of the block through the formation of the circular connecting route. And the fourth phase with the definition of the marginal infill of the fabrics of the block and the reconstruction in continuity to um, via uh, the lanolo. Uh, this uh, um, uh, redesign exercise uh, um, um, is based on uh, um, rebuilding on the rebuilding of blocks transformation phases and that of the building that constituted the block itself. These are uh, some example of block completely um, uh, designed according uh, uh, the transformation that occurs within this block. Uh, also uh, looking at the circle process of infill fabric which occurs uh, in the marginal pertinent areas. Then all this block has been uh, assembled uh, in order to redefine the Santa Croce urban uh, fabric. I'm gonna um, terminate my uh, presentation just uh, recalling this uh, um, um, the words of uh, Gianfranco Canicia, which basically explain the reason why we used to read the, the built reality in general from a territory up to the built in that way, so through uh, a processual uh, method. We intend to talk about the possibility of reading the existing building in order to draw from these thoughts for the project that give rise to a more founded and above all, more convincing building production than that which usually take place. It is good to say immediately, says Kanija, in order to avoid misunderstanding, that we do not think that the past should be understood as a morphological repertory to be plundered, as a mere possibility of increasing the range of individual choices that the designer can indifferently adopt. We believe that it is possible to draw from the existing building laws in the making of the building.
Thank you very much for the attention. Uh, thank you, Nicola. Uh, let us move to the next part of the presentation with Giuseppe Strappa, who is a, a professor at Sapienza University and also the president uh, of Visit Italy. Uh, thank you, Giuseppe, for accepting the invitation. Uh, I'll let you share your screen. As Ms. Nicola. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, I'm sorry for the delay. <laughs> I was outside in Rome and I doesn't succeed in uh, reaching my house in Rome in time. Rome but, traffic. Uh, I, I think, I think the, the, the um, uh, presentation of the method work are the same. Uh, can you just start it from the type house and after arrive to the territory? Okay. So um, I think it, it works at the same. Uh, I think that to share my screen, uh, I need that uh, Nicola. Yes, yes. Close. Yeah. Okay. Um, have you closed your screen? Because here I, I read. Yes. Is I it possible it. to start to share the screen while Are the you? other participant? Uh, I think Nicola stopped. Yeah, uh, I, I closed my screen. Yes, I closed my the sharing. I think we can see yours, but it's on your browser. Uh, sorry. So you need to perhaps stop sharing and share again by clicking on the right screen, on the presentation screen. Um, Can you stop, do you know how to stop sharing? No, let, let me see. I don't see any longer share screen. Okay, um, listen, Ilaria. Yeah. I think that the best. We can see your Google Earth now. No, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So you, you see the screen. Uh, we can see the screen. Oh, you just okay. need to Perfect. select Perfect. Uh, okay. the presentation. Okay. Yeah, that yeah. one. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. There it is. We can see it. Yeah, okay. Oh, it stopped. Uh, okay. And we can't see any longer. Yeah, you can see? No. Oh. Uh, so sh share screen again. And then select the presentation for sharing. Okay, it's coming, now? yes. Okay, okay. So, you can see the full yep. screen? Yes. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, <clears throat> Nadia and Ilaria for inviting us to uh, present this uh, brief uh, presentation of our method. Um, uh, our method is based basically on the idea of process, as you may be as understood from the presentation of uh, Nicola uh, Scardino. And um, the process is a uh, processual method, is a method which is based on the idea that nothing is stable 
in the built reality. Everything is continuous changing. So we must find the law of this transformation to try to understand them and mostly to use them for the design. This is what is uh, I mean, distinguish our method from other method of reading the build landscape uh, carried down carried on by geographer. Right? Um, so um, I, I will present uh, a part of the, the the method which deal with territory. Right? Um, the origin of the idea of territory, territory is quite recent and was not invented by uh, morphologists, was invented by artists, the, the, this kind of idea. Uh, we can say that is an, a, a modern idea which started in 18th century, mid 18th century, with um, a new artistic sensibility developed um, on the idea of measure. Eh? Um, this was the intuition of big dimension with new categories, artistic categories, which was pittoresque and sublime. Um, Edmund Bark has written an important uh, basic uh, book, theoretical book about the matter, which is philosophical inquiry into sublime and beautiful, in which he um, contested in some way the old idea of the beauty, which was based on equilibrium and harmony and agreeable form and so on, and introduced the new categories as abyss, infinite, vertigo, and so on. And all this was based on new perception of the space the large space, huge space, the, the idea of territory. Uh, of course, as you see in the right upright picture, the idea um, was, was presented uh, in many uh, works of romantic artists as Caspar Fredrik, which is one of uh, most clear example of how to intend the new sensibility. You see uh, in, in this in this picture, maybe you see the arrow, yeah, here. For the first time, uh, the man uh, is painted from the back. Um, the infinite uh, is something completely abstract. Um, Gaspar Frederick used to don't paint outside from his room. Was, everything was intellectual, was abstract. And um, this idea was shared also, of course, in many other European countries. You see on the left, bottom left, uh, a painting by Salvatore Rosa, which could be considered a kind of pioneer of this idea uh, with uh, the, this wonderful painting of uh, infinite uh, landscape. You see here the well-known painting Tobias and the angel. And uh, uh, first of all, uh, Giovan Battista Piranesi, which was a, a Venetian architect emigrated to Rome, uh, which painted uh, maybe um, everybody of, of you know um, this engraving presenting a uh, huge dimension, the dimension of abyss, the infinite, and so on. But the scientific study of the landscape was born with the new uh, geography in 19th century and the introduction of the idea of cultural landscape. Before geography was mostly a descriptive uh, science. And um, we can say that with Alexander von Humboldt uh, and his uh, huge work, Cosmos, uh, started the new idea of the geography as interpretation 
of the sites, interpretation of countries, mountains, the, the, all the, the, the feature which compose the territory. And um, the, 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 the German School of Geography, the, 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 the School of Kulturlandschaft, was conti continued by other geographers. The, the most important maybe was Otto Schluter, um, which um, introduced the idea of the geography as a science of the landscape, Landschaft Skunde, and he distinguished uh, in the territory an Ur Landschaft, which is the original landscape, and after a culture Landschaft, which is the cultural landscape, which is the landscape, the nature, which had been transformed by the men. And the most well known may be uh, author in this field of the, the cultural landscape is Kara Soar, uh, which has written many books about the, the matter after the war. And um, okay, he, he, he thought that the, the cultural landscape was the, um, the natural landscape in which a cultural group operate. So the culture is the agent and the um, natural elements, they are the tool and the result is the cultural uh, landscape. Um, our idea of territory is mostly based on the uh, lectures uh, by Saverio Muratori. Uh, Saverio Muratori was, uh, maybe someone of you know, is an Italian architect which posed the problem of reading the built landscape from a scientific point of view. And um, as for the territory, he posed the problem of interpreting the territory uh, from the point of view of the architect, not the geographer, which is the difference. The geographer, geography is mostly a descriptive science in which could be also included the interpretation of the territory. But the difference is that architecture is intended for the design. So, from this point of view, um, we can say that Muratori was really a pioneer, and it's a pity that uh, his book, they are not translated in English. Um, the idea of Muratori was that the territory, as you see here, is an organism. A, the, we, he spoke about territorial organism. And um, the territory was composed by, um, by, sorry, by um, fabric, fabric based on the idea that first of all, man searched the utility of land, in which way the land can be used. And after the man measure the land, take the dimension of the land, and after he chose a modulus uh, to share the, 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 the part of the land, and at the end, he arrived to the uh, parcel, to the, the plot, which are owned by the, uh, the man. So the process is uh, beginning with the selection of the, the, the part of the territory, arriving to a specialization. And it, it's what I will try to demonstrate to you concretely with some drawing. Um, the idea of process was always present in the lectures of Muratori. You see here uh, one very, very uh, clear phrase about this as the, 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 the transformation of, of the, the territory is a, a process. Every form, however complex it may be, always bears every formative step 
imprinted on it. Whatever it's a gradual process or a synthesized process. Um, so we can consider the processual method um, which deal with the unstable condition of the nature, um, a condition of uh, provisorial, we can say, equilibrium of matter in transformation. So we can uh, understand this at any scale. At the scale of the building, for example, we have a generative phase in which the matter is transformed in material. Uh, a second phase in which uh, we, we can say a formative phase in which uh, we obtain the form, formative form of the building, and after a transformative phase in which the building is uh, transformed uh, diachronically, and the final phase, which is the ruin, uh, in which the material again is transformed in matter, uh, which, which is a in my opinion, a very important phase in this transformation uh, with which, um, in my opinion, architects don't deal enough. So uh, you can understand that the, um, the core uh, of the process is that tra the transformation of matter in material. Uh, what is matter? Uh, matter is the substance of which the bodies of the universe are made and we can know them through experience. And material is the aptitude recognized in the matter to be transformed. You see here, for example, a rock in which we can read the aptitude to be transformed. The rock has, hasn't got any form. We must recognize a form through the diaclesis, for example, the fracture between the, the different part of the rock. And after to understanding which way this matter can be understood as material. This one, for example, can become a tile. We can understand that another is a block and so on. So always in the reading of the build landscape, we have these two um, phases. One is the selection. We select in which way um, one part of the, the nature. We are speaking about the rocks, but the things also about trees and clay, for example, and so on. And the second one in which we specialize the use of the material which had been recognized inside the, the matter. So the same um, process in some way, we can uh, understand in the territory. Also the territory is the matter in which the man recognize the aptitude to transformation. So first of all, a definition, what we intend as territory. Very simply, the territory of, uh, is a definition by Saverio Muratori, is the association of the natural soil with the artificial transformation operated by the work of the man. So in which way the man operate on the territory and in which way we can understand the territory? Through the form. The form is our job as architect. We operate through the form. But the form is not the surface of things, it's the visual aspect of a structure. So through the form, we must understand as architect in which way things they work, in which way the territory work. So there is a, a form of the territory which we can distinguish with selection and specialization, which is the form of the territory. We can understand from this uh, simple uh, slide that we have mountains, we have plain, we have valley, 
there is a form of the territory which we can understand trying to read in in which way the uh, forming process of the territory was carried on and in which way we can we can transform again uh, in our time the, the territory so the, the operation they are a selection and a specialization the first selection which man historically has done is the course the road the place in which they move this is the first step and this is very important at any scale i think it's one of the most interesting intuition by Saverio Muratori. Um, often on the books of book of uh, history of the city and so on of architecture we read that um, in, in which way the city or the, the, the territory is formed, the city, uh, through road and void and building. And they are synchronic, which is not absolutely true from our point of view. There, are a, there is a, a hierarchy in this. First of all, there is the movement, the way in which men move, and after the settlement. And this is very important from the process point of view, because we start to understand the structure of the territory from the road. And the road uh, were formed at the beginning of the structure of the territory. I am speaking about Italian territory, but the idea can be extended to many other territories. Uh, the, the first road, was a ridge road. At the, the first, the man followed the ridge. And the main ridge mostly, because they are the ridge which arrive to longer distance. Uh, why the ridge? Well, first of all, because all the valley were swamp, were flooded. So it was dangerous to uh, pass across the, the, the valley, but also because uh, the ridge passing uh, through the, the ridges, it's a way to orientate in the territory. Yeah? Everyone has some uh, um, confidence with the mountains, know that you uh, must always follow the ridge to be oriented. Uh, so, here is a, a short, some phrases by Fernand Brodel, uh, which is a historian and also, we can say, a geographer, uh, which has written with this wonderful book, The Civilization and Empire in the Mediterranean at the Age of Philippus II, and he said that we are accustomed to see the world as people from the valley. Uh, the, the mountain today, they are quite abandoned and we have no idea of the origin of the civilization from the, 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 the mountains. But he writes, life is linked to I region. There is an order by men. What are the causes? Undoubtedly, the variety of mountain resources, but also the domination of stagnant water and malaria in the plains, or uncertain wandering in those river areas. The plains, inhabited nowadays, synonymous with prosperity, were later creation achieved after centuries of collective effort. So, you see that everything starts from the read the mountain ridges, the, the main ridges which were uh, traced at the origin of uh, structuring of the territory. And in Italy we have the main ridges which, which are uh, along the Apennines, which cross all the peninsula, and where the place in which the Italic tribes, they moved and after they settled along the territory. You see here some example is one bottom on the left is from Tuscany is very clear in which way 
the, the, the territory uh, is select, selected and specialized. And the specialization, of course, is also a specialization which uh, involve an hierarchy between the different roads. There are ridge roads which arrive uh, to distant poles and other which are local, and this is something which we'll see soon. So we can speak about a territorial organism as a um, formed by dyads, a couple of terms opposite and complementary. The reading is made by selection and evaluation, which deal with the object, the nature uh, is objective. The, the, uh, an hill is an hill, a valley is a valley, and so on. And the specialization, which deal with the intention, the conscience of the subject. And it depends from the uh, culture of the, the subject because the specialization, the interpretation, we can say, of the matter, of the soil, depends on the intention of the culture of the subject. At the, we can, uh, to be clear, we can uh, think at the beginning of the formation of the territory, the hunters, they understood the territory in one way, the farmers in another, the breeders in another, and so on. And the result, of this uh, acting are road and settlement. The road are territorial or local, to summarize quite roughly, and after they are occasional uh, or systematic. They as a, a, a clear structure or not. At the beginning, they are um, formed without a systematic intention by the subject and after the structure link together all the different roads in a uh, in, in a structure in in, in, in a, uh, a way uh, for which all the uh, system um, is structured toward the same end and the other term of the diet is the settlements the residential or pro, pro, productive place in which uh, the man in, in the, the, the uh, crossing the territory stop, uh, put his house and organize a productive area. And also this could be occasional or systematic. So we can intend the territory as an organism made by system. The system of roads, uh, which has a relationship between them and the hierarchization between themselves and starting from the original track and arriving to the uh, motorway and transport infrastructure, uh, the contemporary transport infrastructure. After we have a settlement system, which is uh, um, based on the relationship between built elements, a land partition system, which is very important, is the most uh, constant and continuous in time, is the system of land properties and the productive system in which the natural resources are, or artificial resources, they are exploited. So let's say the problem from an architectural point of view, in a very simple way, trying to redesign the forming of a territory. This is a method which can be found, find uh, a little bit curious uh, from students which doesn't know our method. The method is to redesign with the tool of the architect, logical tool, in which we pose the problem, in this case, the problem which the first man uh, had crossing the territory and structuring the territory. And of course, verifying, trying to verify um, uh, the result with the, the, the evidence of history. So we can think to a type 
of territory, uh, the general character of the territory, which is in Italy, you see here, we have a ridge, we have a promontory, we have a valley, and we as architect, not geographer or historian, try to understand from the form how it work, this territory, and in which way the first tribes, Italic tribes, uh, crossed this territory. Of course, they started from the ridge and the main ridge, because this one, this is the man crossing is going far away from a distant pole to another because it's the most continuous. So surely the men start to, grow, to cross the main ridge road. So we can call main ridge road. And after the men operate a selection. These places could sometimes also be adapted to settlement, but they never settled here. Why? We can uh, understand with a cross section. I try to make a cross section here. This is the vertical. The reason is that there is no possibility to settle here because there is no water. This is a watershed. If the rain come from the sky, it flow in one side, in another side, but doesn't stop here. The water filter inside the earth and arrive to a certain level in which it finds a semi-permeable uh, layer and the water flow on this layer until it form some sources. And as this layer is extended to all the uh, mountain chain, we have, we can say, a uh, line of ridge, a ridge, as a story uh, of sources, a line of sources, which is this one. Yeah. So the man, we can change color, don't stop here, but go across the ridge, the secondary ridge, arriving in one place in which he formed a first settlement, in the place in which he have the sources. So we can call this secondary ridge road. This is a very important phase, as you can imagine, because it's the origin of the structure of the territory. All this part is a, a cultural area and is shared by the other, by this part of the territory, this secondary valley, in which probably there are streams. So it's formed a part of territory, an area, which is a cultural area in which are shared, shared the culture, the culture of the, the material culture of the, the men, the way they uh, grow uh, food in, inside the area, they, 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 they make uh, crafts and, and so on. Um, of course, also in the other promontory is formed other settlement and they start at a certain point of their developing 
uh, goods. There is a, a certain way of trading. We can see better here. We have, we can imagine something like this, a settlement, a settlement, a settlement, a cultural area different from the other, in which they produce, say, apple, and here they produce uh, maybe arrow. So they start to uh, form another uh, road, which is a local road, and we call local counter ridge road uh, which join which link together to villages to small settlement they are discontinuous we can imagine that there is another here uh, and so on and it, it, it is a, an important step even from the technical point of view we can imagine that here on the, this ridge the forming the forming of the roads is not so difficult is quite flat and the man can arrange the road quite easily but in the other case here in the valley the cross section is this one and the man has to arrange a flat road so he has to cut some uh, here to put here it's a quite sophisticated uh, step uh, in the technology of forming the 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 roads uh, but after after some time it's logical that the men tend to conquer to own all this territory arriving to a low uh, settlement in the promontory he moved along the promontory and uh, arrive in a place which must selected and specialized to form a kind of uh, embryo of a city a village uh, organized structured to control also the valley in which there is the river and, and so on so the settlement is made facing the, the 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 organization of course on the main route is start to build also secondary road to form the village and so on and at this step the trade is quite developed and the exchange they are uh, extended to all the different settlements and we uh, obtain a continuous counter ridge road. Those are local here, here, but this is continuous, a futile uh, road, which continue like this and tend to substitute the main road, the main ridge road. So briefly, we go again back to the first slide. So we suppose that this is a flat place, which was recognized by the man as a, a place uh, which fit with the need of, to organize a settlement. Why we select? this from an architectural point of view because it fit of course because there is the water probably but also for the control of the territory and the def defensive purposes you see that three sides of the potential settlement they are defended by the nature you see here so it's enough to build a very uh, small city wall sometimes as we will see they are even houses uh, which face the valley and work as a protection from the 
for the, the, the village. And after other two um, side of the, the wall. And the third one must be completely artificial because there is no protection in this way. We have a city gate, of course, and we can imagine that we have a secondary ridge road which arrived inside the settlement and is organized a structure of road. And we can also imagine the development of this uh, settlement. When the uh, area inside the city wall is full, they start to build the Burgus, which is a tissue, a fabric outside the door. And after we have also the counter ridge road, so we have other Burgus. So this is the complexity which is formed uh, in these small villages in which we can anyway, if we have in mind these ideas as architects, distinguish the different phases, not knowing the history of the place. Of course, we have to verify all this with the historical evidence, but as architect, we must have an uh, intuitive and immediate uh, idea of the place. You see here, just to have an idea, how steep sometimes is the is slope to form the defensive. Here you have an idea of the, the problem. And if you have a look on Google Earth, uh, on the, 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 all the settlement around Rome, quite all or many of them, they follow uh, the, this rule. See, for example, this one, you have the secondary route, uh, route arriving here. Here is the, the first phase, forming phase of the um, settlement with the territorial route arriving to a former, probably temple at the origin and forming the tissue. And after this is the first phase, it's obvious that this is the second phase in which the Burgus is formed starting from the counter ridge road. And all the uh, settlement can be roughly interpreted like this. Of course, after we have to study the historical evidence, but it's very clear from the point of view of an architect that this settlement is formed by protecting the area with wall in three sides and the fort with the small castle and, and so on. And you see the valley line here. And this is the ridge line, which uh, evidently had been planned generally in 18th century. This is the most distant. This one is winding and arrive here and the other was formed based on the, um, I say, the main route which arrived inside the, the settlement. Sorry to interrupt, Giuseppe. We are already a little bit over time. Oh, I'm so, sorry. Yes. Sure. I go on <laughs> very Terribly quick. fascinating. I'm losing yeah, track I'm of sorry. time I'm as sorry. well. I'm sorry. Uh, so, uh, very briefly, this is um, uh, some, some drawings made by uh, Cataldi about the forming process of Pienza. You see clearly here in which way uh, the, the settlement is formed and is organized through Cartier houses, as Nicola has uh, explained to you. And after, the um, settlement is formed by a main road and a node, and the transformation of the Cartier house in uh, um, row houses. And some one of them, you see here, they organize uh, around a, a common space and specialized, forming 
the successive palazzo, which is Palazzo Piccolomi. So this is Pienza, uh, which is well known as the origin of Renaissance, but uh, uh, um, few architects know that is the result of a process, uh, of the process of uh, um, a forming process which starts with the ridge and secondary ridge and the organization, uh, organic uh, organization of the settlement. Okay, we have uh, after a, a second phase um, in the forming of the territory, which is the organizing of the valley, mostly in the Roman period with Centuriazio. And in this case, we have the secondary valley ridge, uh, valley road, uh, which go in this direction, connecting uh, hydrographical areas. And uh, Muratori distinguished the three, uh, four um, main cycle of organization of the territory, the implantation cycle from the Paleolithic to the fourth century before Christ, the consolidation cycle in which the valley uh, was organized is the Roman uh, period in our countries, which uh, date from the fourth century before Christ to the um, barbaric invasion, a recovery cycle in which the small settlement uh, about which I have spoken before, were recovered, the recovery of Lao promontory settlement, and the restructuring cycle, which correspond to the period from the 13th century to the actual one. Okay, uh, we, we, we can end with this uh, slide. You see how oh, the territorial road formed the road also of the city. This is Rome, this is Via Flaminia, which is a territorial road coming from the north, which come inside the city and form Via Lata, which was after transformed in uh, uh, Via del Corso and became the urban matrix of other roads, which are, you see here, the other roads we are, which are the building roads and connecting roads here. So all the hierarchy was established by a territorial structure. Uh, just to say that there is a very strong link, which uh, not always is clearly understood, between the territory and the urban fabric. The urban fabric is generated by the territorial uh, rules and hierarchy. So I think we can stop here. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and I hope that there is some question by the students to clarify maybe some part that we didn't ex expose, presented clearly. Uh, thank you, Giuseppe. I found it terribly fascinating. Uh, it, it really shows how the different scales uh, um, of city formation work together. Um, usually, I am. I tend to focus uh, and. Uh, enjoy the very urban scale of uh, um, the urban fabric and the process of aggregation um, uh, of, the, of the aggregation of the building organism. Um, but what, what I felt today from your presentation is uh, how important that territorial scale is even once we look at the detail of the city. And I'm thinking that if I wasn't a, an urbanist or an urban morphologist, if I was coming from a different field, I 
would almost consider this approach a socio-ecological approach. Uh, of course, in urban morphology, we call it a processual typological approach. But your presentation really highlighted to me that strong relationship between men and the territory, the, you know, the, the socio-ecological approaches would use as a framework to understand human interaction or organism as such, um, which is, makes it, I think it makes the approach even more relevant to today's big issues for cities in terms of, in, in environmental terms and in the relationship between men and the environment. Um, so that was my comment, my reaction to it. Um, I hope there are some questions either from our students or from the guests in the audience. Uh, you can put your camera on and speak or you can um, put a question in the chat if you want. Hello, thank you for your lecture, both of you. It was really uh, insightful. My name is Greta Kukele, and uh, actually I'm a bit new in the memoratory approach, so uh, I apologize if my question might seem a bit out of the context. But uh, during uh, both of your lectures, you really mentioned, uh, you put a, a strong emphasis on the process and the ability of architectures to redesign or to use this uh, tool as a way to redesign the territory based on the history and you see the territory as an organism. But my question is, if to understand these uh, tools or to see this, to understand these rules and to see how these rules are evolved, it takes lots of time. And in a, in a situation where you have these new settlements that uh, emerge out of nowhere, such as the suburbs or the new towns like in, the, in Dubai or the smart cities somewhere in Korea, how does this approach actually uh, Accommodate accommodate these uh, new settlements that don't have these evolutionary historic rules created through time. And is this approach like suitable? I understand it's a way, a wonderful way to read the territory and to understand more for, from it. I'm fascinated actually by it. But how it can be used in such type of settlements that they say the rules have not had the time to be established yet, or that the designers or the ones that projected it might have not uh, created such a uh, uh, skill, such a uh, territory skill reading before to create this settlement. Uh, I hope I was uh, clear with my question. Oh, yeah, it is very clear. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if uh, Nicola want to answer, otherwise I answer. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, I think that one of the, the problem is a, a political problem. Huh? When we made the um, research that Nicola presented about the suburb of Rome, we had also a political intention, which is the commonplace about the expansion of Rome. Everything is a, a confused magma of uh, uh, building and roads. Everything is fragmented. And this is a very, uh, I say, a, a new uh, literature. Uh, about the, the, the city, the consideration that everything is uh, uh, not un understandable and is uh, complex and so on, and the complexity must be considered of something which must be investigated by part and so on. So, which is the result from the political point of view of this statement that everything is a magma in which we must operate by part? that everything is, everything is allowed. Uh, I, I am speaking about the case of Rome, but the, 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 uh, the, the, the problem is common in many, at least European uh, cities. There is no rule in the periphery. Um, we, we just operate um, part by part. So we can allow, um, any volumes for the new buildings, any, um, I say, new arrangement. And the result is the speculation, which is a term which is not used at all uh, in our literature, speculation, 
is the uh, you say the power which uh, give the rules of the new uh, settlements, the new expansion. So we try to demonstrate that also the periphery is an historic territory, that there are some laws, and the laws are linked to the uh, forming feature, forming character of the territory, the ridge, which are evidently present in Rome, even in the expansion of the 60s, which was a very wild expansion of the, the city, in which the speculation uh, dictated, gave the, the, the rules of the, 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 the new settlements, but they, we can say quite spontaneously, followed some rules, which was to follow the ridge, to, uh, you say, to give to the settlement a certain structure. Nowadays, everything is possible. So, which is the uh, conclusion and um, replay to uh, your answer? I think that we must consider the territory as a process. So, our is the last process of a long standing forming process. Uh, we don't have only Rome, um, many of uh, our peripheries, they are we can say quite lost, we, we can just rehabilitate. There is no new structure to make. But for the territory, someone say that uh, we have to speak of, uh, we say, città in espansione, expanded city. So the territory is city, is not territory, which is something which I don't share at all. I think that many of these cities, you have seen some aerial photos, of this uh, um, settlement, they are wonderful. They are places in which it's possible to live very well. The cost of the um, apartments is nothing. They are quite free because nobody wants to live there. And they are a very important resources for the expansion of Rome from my point of view. It's much better to reuse these historical places which few knows, even Romans, they don't knew these places around the city. They are wonderful, they cost nothing. They just have the need to be rehabilitated. So the first problem is the uh, connection, the transport connection, which don't work well. So it's very difficult to use these places. The other one is the services is not allowed. They are protected is a contradiction. They are abandoned, but protected by law. Huh? So you, you can't make transformation inside just because they are historical heritage. So our idea is, is that we must continue a process. Even in the Middle Age, there were a phase of specialization. I tried to present you with the example of Pienza. Uh, there was a place which was transforming in Palazzo, which is a specialized building. Why don't allow to control the process of transformation, but to allow to transform the, 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 the fabric sometimes in a uh, um, special building uh, in, in modern terms, but congruent with the, the, the process. So we think that the result, the, the designing result of this uh, you say, intending, reading of the territory is a design, which is the end of a process. We study the process, not just to know the process. We study the process because our design is the last phase of an ongoing uh, um, process. I don't know if it, it had been clear or, or not. Yeah, thank you very much. It's the, it makes sense in a way because uh, these new settlements don't appear in a in an empty space. They appear in some yeah, territory, and the territory course, has its own history. Yeah. So definitely, it's, I totally agree with you. And thank you very much for the yeah, comment. Every, every territory is an historical territory. It doesn't exist, at least in Europe, a place which was not occupied and uh, is not a, a history. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you very much, Professor Strapa. Thank you. Um, anyone else who would like to ask any questions or uh, have any comments for 
Giuseppe or Nicola? Uh, Alessandro. Hello, yeah, sorry. I, 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 I could not attend the entire lecture because we are with Annalinda Linia, Nelia in the master review thesis of our student Luai Hussein is also here. Hello, Luai. So I Hello. beg your pardon for not being here the entire time. But I got a comment and a question. The comment is, so basically this is a cyclical theory. So cyclical means it repeats, you know? So we start from the ridge, we go to the valley, then they go back on the ridge and then they go back in the valley, you know? So that's the idea of the cycle. And the question is, what comes next? What, what is the next phase for the future? Well, the, the, the next we, we don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, uh, I am a Muratori follower, surely, but I am some perplexities about the uh, it's a deterministic way of intending the cycle. Eh? We are not, uh, you know, our future is not by force uh, organized on the idea of cycles. My, my idea anyway is not uh, as a, a commonplace uh, is retained now, the abandon of city. Eh? Now we have the pandemic. I, I know uh, the, 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 the context in which your question is posed is the pandemia and the idea that the city is a dangerous place and we must um, uh, reach again the, 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 the villages, the small settlement and so on, which is an idea which um, is widely shared in Italy, was posed clearly by Boeri, who was uh, thinking about the end of a city and the forming of new small quarters, small entities, quarters and uh, villages and, and so on. My opinion is that uh, this period of pandemia is not new uh, in our history. Uh, there was the plague, which was even worse from the urban point of view of the pandemic, our pandemic. And uh, there was a crisis, of course, of the, 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 the cities, think to the plague of the greed plague of Milan, in which the people exp 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 escaped uh, in the village around Milan. Uh, and I th I, I, if I will remember, 60% of the people was killed. So it was really um, a, a big crisis from the city. But after a few years, Milan uh, was reorganized and uh, was a much more lively city than before. So I think that the city is a need for the men. We, we can't avoid the, 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 the city. Yeah, sorry, well, what, uh, see, yeah. But, may, may, but you're not answering. What happens next? Forget about pandemic. Yeah, yeah. In, no. in this. Well, uh, of course, um, I don't know what will happen. I, I can say what, we, uh, what I hope, uh, and maybe if we are clever, it will happen. Speaking of a small uh, center, a small historical center and... Uh, uh, I think that they will be reorganized. That instead of expanding the cities in the way they are doing now, uh, in a confusing way, uh, uh, with the, 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 you say, the law which, which, are, which are imposed by the speculation, we stop this kind of expansion and we start to recover the villages, the settlement, the historical uh, minor centers and so on. Because if we invest in this, it's not only a cultural act, a, a cultural operation, it's an economical operation. The value of this uh, huge heritage would be increased very much. And some of these villages, they have even now the, the uh, connection with railways, it's enough that we improve 
uh, these tools. And we uh, allow, as I said before, and as we studied in our research, we allow the transformation of this site, which is not a wild transformation, a speculative transformation, is a transformation controlled, congruent uh, with the proportion. Uh, for this reason, we have to study the forming process and to think that as in any organism, the organism die if he doesn't develop. So we have to develop that organism knowing the process and knowing in which way uh, it uh, have to be transformed. You know that in many of these villages, for example, the city hall uh, is built outside in the territory with a consumption of territory enormous because all the services, trading services, commercial service, they are uh, built outside with the um, exploiting of the, the territory enormous. We can just transform uh, the settlement and from a general point of view, obtain that the city is preserved in the, uh, you say, congruent sites. And the expansion is the renewal of the new, the, 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 the old settlements. This is my prevision, but... but <laughs> it, no, it, we're, we're, the... we're just doing a speculative a philosophical question, which is, I mean, if this is a cyclical theory, and we think it's true, there must be another phase, maybe 100 years from now. So it's cyclical. So it, it, it's coming back, you know? That's the, uh, either we postulate the end of history, or we're going to, sometime in the future, we're going to be enter in a, entering in a new phase. Uh, now, forget about the pandemics, because I see that new phase coming for a, no a number of, uh, of elements. The flooding, the climate change. A number of cities were flooded recently, New Orleans, or just to mention one. Um, and the climate change, raising rising level of seas in the long term, we're going to be moving into a phase in which the valleys are not safe anymore, maybe 100 years from now. And it, it, something is going to change. You know, the bridges are collapsing, cities are being flooded, sea levels are raising. This is long term, not tomorrow. So I, I'm just, you know, wondering what is the next phase in this cycle? And uh, now the pandemics might be accelerating that stuff, but that stuff is running uh, alone without the pandemics, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, uh, you are right. The climate change will influence much the changing of uh, our cities, our future. Um, I had some experience with a semester in, in Canada in which the climate change uh, caused the um, crisis of all the coasts. It's something unbelievable. I realized just staying there because um, uh, seen from Europe, it seems something uh, abstract, but really think they are changing and it's dangerous and it's something with which we will deal in the future. But the way in which things will change, we don't know. We, we must take in account that... Um, we, we must take in account that the, the, the first phase of forming of the territory was with, a, a, to use a, a word of Muratori, with spontaneous cushions. Now we don't have spontaneous cushions. We have a very sophisticated, critical cushions and uh, technological knowledge. So I think that the, the, the cycle uh, can't go on in this deterministic way in which uh, Muratori has posed. Honestly, I think that is the weak part of the teaching of, uh, of Muratori. We don't know. It's true that something will change. We, I think we must make effort in the way that the, um, the changes must be rational, must, be, must fit with the need of the man, but make a provision, I think, is really is unrealistic. No, no, I'm not, I'm not asking for a provision. What I'm saying, if we don't know, we should do some research. Yeah, we, we, we can hope and we can make effort. You know, uh, we can research. do research. Yeah. We can do some research on this. But let me share yeah, okay. with you what... 
one important thing. In the University of Miami, which you know as a coastal city, in the past four years, all their studios are dealing with this topic. What if the water level raises yeah. in the city? What they're going to do with the buildings if the water grows up to two, three meters? I'm not joking. All their research is uh, in this direction because they're afraid that it's going to happen in the near future. That's one point, okay, for the research. We're talking about research, not about prediction. Prediction is magicians. We're researchers, so we do research. So I think we should look into the future. That's the sign, you know, and not for, you know, not because we're magicians, but because we are designers. So what is the next phase? Where are we going? And how can we take this into design? This is, in my opinion, very important in this time. Well, can I say something um, about that? Um, um, I would like to, 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 to move from what Alessandro said before. So uh, the cycle from up to down and the down to up. So basically uh, the cycle has at the base the transformation. I think the key maybe is more a simplistic way, but the transformation, how transform, which categories we use to read for assume the transformation is the key to face the transformation. In other terms also, I would like to say that even the past has seen a lot of drastical changes. A lot of city has been covered by sand, for example, or have completely disappeared. The fact is not, as you said, predict the future, the future but assume the right key for interpreting the reality, the territory or the structure of the city for to uh, drive the transformation. That's, that's my point. So the, the key is not uh, to avoid the transformation, but drive the transformation. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, very interesting discussion, again, in relation to climate change and the big issues cities are facing today. Um, it, it's quite late, given the, the original and time of the seminar. Uh, I'm going to ask if anyone has a very final, very quick final question or comment. Please uh, ask now or comment now. If not, uh, we will bring it to an end. Thank you very much, everyone, uh, for taking part and keep following the project. Uh, there will be more seminars, uh, um, sessions, workshops uh, in the future, in the summer or um, in the fall. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Goodbye. Good.